right. Don't forget yeah. to put your name in the uh, attendees section of the meeting notes so that we know you were here. Uh, keeping attendance helps us know who was available for particular conversations. And um, if there's votes on things, we like to be sure everybody's been included and, and whatnot. All right, uh, we good on the agenda? Is there anything folks want to add? Or uh, we're good? All right, not hearing anything. Uh, Christian, go ahead with uh, release updates. Unfortunately, I don't really have a lot. Um, Vadim is out currently. Um, once he's back, uh, we will um, actually start to, to write like a, a standard operating procedure for creating OKD releases so we can um, yeah, better disseminate that knowledge and uh, have more people uh, help out with that. I'm not sure how much the community can, can do in, in that regards um, since those things will require some permissions within our OpenShift uh, shift org. Um, but yeah, disseminating that knowledge is definitely going to be, uh, be a good thing. So yeah, for now, no updates on on the release part um, for for uh, the usual OKD releases and for ARM uh, releases, we're still working on it. Unfortunately, um, that we're still blocked internally uh, by some issue. But uh, they well, once we have resolved um, that issue and we we actually have CI builds um, for for uh, OpenShift uh, for all of OpenShift, then we can also um, mirror out uh, and, and tag uh, OKD releases. So that is kind of bound together internally with the CI work for, for ARM, uh, for the ARM platform. And then uh, that'll actually enable us to also do the external OKD release for that platform. Um, we do now have, and may, maybe Timothy uh, um, has, has, I think that's already in the FCOS updates mentioned there. So we do now have, um, Fedora Core OS uploaded to AWS, so the AMIs are now available, I think, in all the regions on AWS. That was um, one of the main missing pieces there as well, um, because we need the installer to reference that AMI. Um, so now we have those AMIs, and now the only part missing is ha having actually the component image on, on our Prow CI system. Which should be, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to happen this week, but it shouldn't be much more. We're, we're really on the verge here. When you when you get that um, piece in the Prow system, um, and we can, could we do a little very short blog um, announcing it uh, somewhere? Oh, I, I, absolutely. Um, there's also I'm I'm also going to prepare a presentation um, on on the whole OpenShift on our maybe if we get to uh, do doing the open. The OKD releases right away. Um, that'll be focused on OKD too. Um, so that is definitely my plan. Yeah. So maybe um, if you're going to do a presentation on OKD on ARM, um, we could do that as a briefing or an AMA too, and broadcast it out. And did I um, invite you to the office hours at KubeCon? I think you're in there. So if you could do a little, if yes. that could be part of the spiel there, that would be great um, to include that um, and that update. So thank you for all that work. Are you welcome? Thank you, Christian. Uh, next up, uh, FCOS updates with Timothy. Hey, so Timothy Javier from the Forest Team at Red Hat uh, for FCOS updates. Uh, so I have three items today, and most of them are forthcoming uh, things. So the first one is um, like kind of a warning, but shouldn't be big one, uh, we are trying to move away from the legacy IP table backend in uh, Fedora Core S to the NF table based IP tables backend. So this is something that has been done for a while in Fedora, but for various bugs, it hasn't happened in Fedora Core S. Uh, and we want to have that happen uh, at the same time, approximately at the Fedora 35 uh, rebase. So this is coming like in a couple of weeks. And we'll try to do that for new nodes first, and then for everything in node because we don't really want we don't really expect any issues here, but uh, we'll we still want to give folks some time to try things and make sure that nothing breaks. So the like the short version of this is 
Uh, the difference between the two is essentially you're using different paths in the kernel, but uh, it's fully it should be fully compatible. So uh, there should be there should be no breaking changes. Um, the second item is about the Fedora Core test day that we are putting up in the, I think it's next next week or something like that, uh, and so we'll prime and. Um, to just a few tests that people can do to make sure that Fedora Chorus works well on their platform. So this is like slightly on the side related to OQD because if you want to make sure that Fedora Chorus work well on your platform. Uh, that will certainly help OQD work well on your platform. Uh, Maybe the yeah. link on the agenda is wrong, pointing to the same tracker as the oh. IP tables. NFT. True. Oops, I did the wrong copy paste. Think that now. How it is should be the good one now. And uh, yeah, so yeah, testing next, which will be Fedora 35 based, will be the most interesting from a testing perspective. Uh, the other ones are less, uh, don't have that much change right now. Um, and then the third point uh, is around. Uh, our Arch 64, which is coming, which so we have builds right now, they are ready, and we are enabling that in the the download page, so you should be able to try that out more easy, easy in an easier way. But Rock OS. And this, this is just, uh, Timothy, this is just the links, right? The builds already exist, they're just not linked out to yet. Yeah, yeah, it's just sort of official links to have that officially in the in the in the Dolan page because you can like figure out the links from the full builds brother and everything, but we don't necessarily publish as uh, officially all the builds that we do, uh, all the release builds that we do. So, like, if you get the raw list of builds, potentially you are using builds that we don't think are um, are valid. So like the links from the download page are fully like stamped and should be good for, for usage. I have two questions for you. Um, yep. The first one, I think it has been already replied by Jamie, the latest 93448 and latest stable 447 to be used for testing Fedora Core OS 35 on the test day, right? There's no plan to test 4.9 on top of that. We've not done so, any, I don't know anyone's been testing 4.9 at this point. Well, I give it a try this morning, but yeah. And so the second the, one is- The, the reason for, we... for that is, oh, go ahead, go the reason for not testing 4.9 yet is that it hasn't actually been released yet. So it's not a a stable version of, Oak, uh, of the OpenShift code base yet. Um, that is supposed to happen very soon. Uh, but since I think we are still not able to upgrade 4.7 to 4.8, uh, our stable stream is still stuck on 4.7 for now. We we should definitely test the latest nightly for 4.8 though, because um, once that is figured out, we will be updating um, stable to 4.8, and then subsequently once 4.9 is released to 4.9 as well. Uh, but for now, 4.8 is still the the most current. Uh, stable version, even though it's not yet in the stable stream because we're missing the upgrade path, um, it should be uh, installable on a fresh install. Um, yeah, and for that, I would just take the, the latest nightly, obviously. Yeah, uh, just wondering because um, from the OKD virtualization SIG side, uh, we are running on bare metal UPI for now. So it, it, it's kind of complicated in, in its own ways, so yeah. And we are kind of trying to use the latest version uh, in order to provide feedback before it gets released. So that, that's- I mean, yeah, if, if, you're, if, if you're using uh, experimental features, um, you can probably test uh, the 4.9 builds as well. They should be, like, you should be able to install them. I wouldn't expect uh, too big, uh, like, like any problems that, that are really big because um, I think, yeah, 4.9, OpenShift, uh, OpenShift Compute uh, Platform Product 4.9 uh, 
the release is not far out, um, so builds by now should be pretty stable. Uh, yeah, we're not saying they're stable or usable, but yeah, for, for experimental testing, um, uh, especially if you rely on features that have only been added after for um, feel free to, to use those as well. I think they, they should be. Okay, thanks. The second question that I have for Timothy is, where should we report bug to the Fedora Bugzilla or to the Fedora Core OS GitHub? So bugs in Fedora Core OS are best reported in the Fedora Core OS tracker. So I'll put the link okay. there. Uh, but best way to report them is to find an issue on GitHub. So okay. the link Thanks. is coming in there. Yeah, there. And I have the link to the notes. Excellent. Any other questions uh, regarding Fedora Core OS? Questions or comments for Timothy? All right, excellent. Let's move on to the next item, uh, which is doc updates. Take it away, Brian. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we've got the beta site up and running, and I've ported all the sort of content across there. Um, there's still some work on the content to be done, because, I mean, things like the FAQ that's in the repo, it hasn't been updated for quite a while. so. I'm not saying that the documentation is finished, but we're now in a state where at least it's got everything that's on the current site in the in the new beta site. Um, so it's really, when do we want to switch it live? As far as I'm concerned, we're, we're good to go now. There have been a couple of questions asked this week. Um, one of them <clears throat> is, why are we in the OpenShift CS org, not the OpenShift? Um, and is this a problem? If so, should we be looking to move before we switch it live? Because it's all going to be linked in with the GitHub pages. Um, and the other thing that I just wanted to ask is about the code of conduct. We don't really have a code of conduct, yeah. but most open source sites do. So a suggestion that I've actually put in there is, should we just point at the CNCF code of conduct and say, we, no, we, 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 yeah. Oh, so so two, well, let's two do, let's do hold on let's do one at a yeah. time for our listeners here diane if you could give us the elevator pitch version <laughs> of the history of the yeah. repo yeah we'll start with that yeah. all right so i i did uh i don't know brian if you saw the email that i responded to that thread um with the the short history of why the repos are the way they are um did you get a copy of that i'm not sure what i probably should have I don't think it went out to the whole main list, so I think it was just an, an in, set of individuals, so I apologize for that. Um, basically, uh, when we started the open source side of OpenShift, um, it was called Origin, if anyone remembers that. Um, and the repos are still all, um, where the code lives is still all Origin, um, which makes things wonderfully confusing. We didn't change the name at the time. Um, for multiple reasons. One is we had lots of end users who had written scripts and things that we didn't want to break um, during the 3.x era. Um, and um, the other was we didn't really have the resources to change even our own internal processes. Um, so we kept that and you'll still see all of our um, open source code in the origin repo. Um, and the other is in order to get, um, and, and I think Christian touched on this earlier in the call, um, the permission from the engineering team to edit and create a landing page under the OpenShift organization um, was, um, not, was, was not gonna happen um, for external users or even um, for myself to get that kind of privileges and permissions. So we created the, um, the OKD repo um, the reason it's in the OpenShift-CS, which stands for Customer Success, um, is the folks that helped us build it. That was the repo they owned on GitHub um, to do it in. And it's not an optimal place for us to live. Um, as the, um, the Vert folks, the Kubevert folks pointed out, that was, the, I think, the kicker. Um, um, the OKD Vert folks were the ones who were asking the question. So, um, and it's not a perfect world. Um, but now as we're moving um, with Brian to your um, MK Docs version and creating that in GitHub, um, once we get that done, I think it's a very good time to 
revisit that I have a theory that we could do okay a github um, slash okd repo um, was what I suggested in in the email thread and that would be much more open source um, politically correct than openshift-cs um, especially as we move to not need the resources we needed from the customer success team which has been renamed five times since the beginning of that time but it still is the customer dash cs repo so it was a good question um, and and i just wanted to give the background on why it's there and it's you know it may sound lame but that's that's the history um, and i would love to move it to um, okd but putting it underneath the um, the OpenShift uh, repo just in just asks begs the question of multiple um, permissions that we'd need to get from the engineering teams and everybody else, and that would just um, slow down the process and make it less open, shall we say? So I'm seeing everybody plus one the idea of creating the OKD.org. I would love to do that. Um, we'll have to run it by the engineering folks, um, and so maybe Christian. Um, in one of the next engineering sessions that we have, team meeting we have, um, we'll do that. Um, so that's that's that part of the. I guess I guess so. Just to, while we talk about that, the only change it's going to make is when we do the DNS redirect to the GitHub pages. Yep. So I don't think it'll be a problem. Yeah. Bouncing to the OpenShift CS GitHub pages. And then later bouncing it to an OKD org. Yeah, I would love to see this happen. Um, I don't see anybody having any objections to it, um, and it would just make the whole. Th and especially the the guys who used to be in this customer success team would love to get this um, off their uh, and out of their repo. So um, and and move on to their new jobs because they all have been promoted like at least three times since they were customer success people. So. Um, yeah, so that's the story behind the repos, and it came out of the conversation about the overt folks creating their own OKD overt repo, and I, I think Jamie was doing some outreach to them to see if we could get them to move under customer success, and that's what brought up the topic. So, yes. Well, to, to get them under, to, to be clear, to get them under OKD, wherever that may be, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Sorry, okay, and then the next one was the code of conduct question. So, yeah, so the code of conduct, well, we can't really point to the CNCF one. Um, I had pulled the the one from Ansible, um, and I have been lax and was going to post it as a discussion for this group to look at the Ansible one and see if we could use that, because I know that's been vetted by Red Hat Legal multiple times, um, and it seemed pretty um, robust and to the point. So I will do that as an issue and let the group review that, and then we can pull it in, Brian, to the, the landing pages that you're creating, um, if that works. And that way, at our next docs meeting, we can look at it, edit it any way we need to do, and then at the next working group meeting, we can approve or debate the um, finer points of it. Okay. That at work for everybody. And if you want to take graze over to the Ansible docs, there's a, a whole page there that I was going to lift and shift and do a cut and replace. Okay. Um, and then just the final one in the footer, we do have some social media links which point to various places linked to do with OpenShift. So I think in the agenda, Jamie did put about a Twitter. But there's also a Facebook link as well. The Facebook, are they just going to the OpenShift Facebook page and the OpenShift Twitter? There is there is no OKD Twitter handle or Facebook page that I am aware of. So it's yeah, probably I mean, they're just... going, it's OpenShift Home on Facebook. So facebook.com slash OpenShift. And the is Twitter the one. On... one, or is that a different one? Oh, that's just the... The regular Red Hat OpenShift. Group. Yeah. yeah. And the Twitter's going to twitter.com slash OpenShift. So the reason well. I threw this on here is the, yeah, the documentation group, which I'm almost thinking should be the communications group. It almost seems like it's 
we talk about more than just documentation, but just communications in general. The idea came up again of uh, Twitter, of having a Twitter, because so much communication is done in terms of announcements of new releases and updates and bugs and whatever. And so this was been revisited a couple times, um, once before I was in the group and once I think just after I joined the group. Um, what do people think about registering a Twitter with OKD something? Because obviously it, uh, I think OKD is already taken. We had this discussion, but. Yeah. You could um, ask nicely to get the OKD name back. You could ask Or nicely. use OKD project. Yeah. Diane, you seem to have some hesitancy of a, of a Twitter in general. Let, yeah, let us know I have, your thoughts. Yeah, so my thoughts are, um, it's a pain in the arse to, to manage. Um, and if we have announcements, the OpenShift Twitter handle would reach a much wider audience for us. So if we wanted to start doing announcements um, of OKD releases, um, I'm sure I could get them to be added to the OpenShift one and it would create, um, and that there is a person who manages that um, and watches it and responds to stuff on it. Um, I'm hesitating because I already have um, OpenShift Commons, um, which I, I manage and, um, and it is often quite silent, um, but it does, you know, both of those, the OpenShift Commons and OpenShift, if we really, it, and we can talk about this and maybe in the docs slash communications working group. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if I created that that OKD GitHub repo. I'll just have to check and see if it's me that opened it. Uh, so for so. people who are who are watching this, and that seems like a, a non sequitur, someone posted yeah. a link to GitHub.com slash OKD, yeah. which is so. uh, yeah. Uh, so Mike, you got your hand up. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, about the whole like Twitter thing and whatnot, and communications in general. Um, I, I'm kind of curious, like, what does the Fedora community do around? The I I would expect if we were going to have like an OKD specific communications channel, that we'd want to have a little like process behind it before we just start, you know, blasting stuff out. So I'm kind of curious, like, do, does Fedora do something similar with the way that they roll out their announcements and their kind of official communication channels? So Fedora has the main line Fedora Twitter handle but also has for many of the product variants, uh, you can, uh, for many of the product variants or, or SIG variants or whatever, um, there are specif specific Twitter handles for them. It is actually up to the working group slash SIG to elect to have one. So for example, Corios has one, um, Silverblue has one, um, and a number of other one, uh, a number of other variants do as well, like KDE and Kinoite don't yet. Um, they may, they may not, don't know for sure yet. We haven't decided. Uh, so it is up to them. And there is a, um, there's an informal policy that things coming from specific sub-team deliverables, uh, sub-team uh, Twitter accounts get retweeted by the main one. So to, to, to amplify that reach, um, but also, um, there is some complexity in terms of making sure people are granted access to those Twitter handles while at the same time Fedora retains control of all of the Twitter handles. So like the main, the main problem is delegating permissions and I don't think we actually have a setup for that here um, uh, mm -hmm. within the OpenShift team. Uh, so yeah. Diane? Yeah, I guess. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut anyone off. Uh, was that John? Was oh, that was that was me. I was just going to respond to what I, I was just going to say. Like, that, thanks, Neil. Like, that really appreciate the kind of guidance there. Um, I guess, I, like, my preference would be to see some of that kind of governance and process set up first before we start doing the other thing. But you know, that's just kind of my gut feeling. Well, let me ask this, Diane. Do you know? So, if, what if it's something not um, not a release? Like, what if it's the meeting videos getting posted and stuff like that? Would they yeah. be willing to post stuff like that as well? well or does I, it have to have a certain threshold of coolness and- With, and, with my uh, advanced social media skills, which are so advanced, um, what I, I think like 
what would be easier for the OpenShift Twitter handle managers and, and myself as an OpenShift Commons Twitter handle, ha, handle manager um, is to have an OKD one created of some ilk, um, whether it's Project OKD or OKD.io or whatever we do in order to find an OKD one in Twitter land. If we tweet it and then we ask for it to be retweeted, sort of what um, Neil is doing as a way of, of going through it. Though I do think it needs to be owned by um, or managed by someone, and I'll have to look into the, the OKD um, remark that someone's making in the chat about it not being trademarked for IT use. Um, this is, we'll have to ask legal. that. Um, but I think we will probably need one person to be a red hatter, um, and, and multiple people can have access to the username password for a Twitter handle to manage it. But um, I think the, it would have to be owned, I would say, by Red Hat, um, is my gut, is what it said. But I, I think it's much easier if there's a sub one to get others to re-broadcast um, re, re it for us. Um, like the Red Hat, um, Red Hat Open, um, Red Hat Community, Red Hat, um, you know, and Red Hat in general um, when we have releases and stuff. So, and yeah, the videos are kind of just um, specific to us. They're not really big, um, big watch things for, for normal OpenShift folks. So I would say creating, I'm not against creating a Twitter handle if we can find, agree to one. Okay, well, let's talk about it in the docs uh, group. I just wanted to uh, bring that up because there is so much communication right now that happens via Twitter uh, in terms of Kubernetes stuff and, and tech stuff in general that it seems like we're sort of missing out if we don't take advantage of, of the medium there. Uh, let's uh, move on, and I'll add that as a, 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 an item to put on the agenda for the docs meeting. Um, let's now move on to... Uh, <clears throat> Jamie. Uh, yeah. Jamie, just well, let's vote. On. Actually, let's I was vote going to say, well, what what is the process of actually when we decide to switch live? Uh, we take a vote on it right now. Um, so this is an official vote because it's something big. I will send something over the Google group uh, as well because that's actually in our bylaws. Uh, but for the people that are here. Uh, uh, the a proposal is on the table. I'm making the proposal that we allow Brian to make the shift and uh, Diane and Brian to work on getting the DNS change to make the beta site go live uh, ASAP. Uh, motion is on the floor. Does anyone want to second that? Uh, I'll second that. Okay, seconded by Bruce. Any further discussion? Yes, we are following Robert's rules here. Uh, any further discussion? <laughs> uh, all in favor? Say aye or plus one. Plus one. Aye, plus one. <laughs> Funny. Okay, and uh, anyone opposed? Okay, anyone abstaining? All right, so let the record show that everyone in the call uh, voted with a plus one. Um, uh, ex let's see, yeah, that's everybody. Okay, and so go forth and move it uh, at your earliest convenience, and I'll send something out. I'm assuming that no one is going to, like, override the 12 or whatever votes that we have here when I post to the mailing list, so I would say that just go ahead uh, yeah. and do it. And we will note that if an official vote was taken on this issue uh, moving forward. So, Brian, um, let's chat um, via email over this, and we'll add in it's Jerry Fala, um, because Will Gordon is off on paternity leave, um, and so we'll get it switched over hopefully in the next you know 48 hours or 72 hours or whatever it takes thank you so much brian for all the work yeah i echo that that was some awesome work man thank you this is uh, one of those achievement unlock things yes very much so uh and i want to move on to issues there's one that is kind of it's causing some weird problems in a couple of different places. Uh, if you look at, uh, in the agenda, I've got a link to it. It's issue 873. We've had a couple opened up that are duplicates on this sort of overall issue. 
Um, the change log stuff in the nightlies from the CI is broken. It, you're not able to actually see the um, the change logs. It ends up showing uh, an error saying that it could not generate it. If you go to the repo, and this is Vadim's repo where the CI is pulling from, uh, all of the commits are gone after February like 14th or something like that. And so these are all referencing commits. That's why it can't get the changelog because it's referencing commits that don't exist in the repo anymore for some reason. Uh, Vadim is out until October, probably the first week of October, maybe the second week. So we don't really have a way of fixing this at the time. Uh, if folks could just be aware of it and the different ways in which this uh, impacts um, users. And uh, ideally we'll find some solution where Maybe a couple of folks have access to Vadim's repo or have, I don't know, we'll have to figure something out because it seems like a really weak point uh, in our process for one person if, if the repo goes south that CI is based off of that there's nothing that we can do about it if they happen to not be here. So we can have that discussion. Um, yeah. If I just can, can add to that. Um, so we are working internally on pulling all that code back into the OpenShift code base uh, and essentially unforking the machine config operator now, um, upstreaming that into the master branch and kind of not needing uh, Vadim's fork there anymore. Um, yes, for the time being, we, we cannot fix this until he's back, but uh, in the future, we will um, definitely pull that back into the OpenShift org and make, make all of those branches uh, force push protected so, uh, so these things uh, cannot happen in the future. Excellent. And um, in terms of other issues, are, are there any issues that people wanted to highlight out of the issues uh, submitted in the repo? Um, uh, Sandro submitted a whole bunch, actually. There's a lot there. Um, there's like, what, five different um, items, which we'll have to take a look at because these are all like early this morning. Um, yeah, so some of them may be related to the usage of some HTTP proxy that maybe has caused some of the troubles that I reported. I'm still investigating them. And a few other are probably related to the Linux issues that I also reported to the Fedora the Linux policy package. And a few others I don't know. <laughs> I just reported them because I have no clue on. Uh, on what's going on there. And it's kind of hard to understand where the installer gets stuck and why. And it's not an easy task to find the, the right place. Right, we're actually working on a document, um, actually Vadim was helping with this, that sort of helps people troubleshoot uh, installer issues or at least better know better where to look on that. Uh, that's a work in progress, so this might be a good case, actually, uh, use case um, to help build that documentation. So expect us, once I, once we can comb through um, what you've submitted uh, this morning, uh, we can provide some feedback and then maybe use that to inform a document uh, that um, can help folks uh, with uh, installer issues. Uh, it brings up another point that I'll talk about a little bit later in the meeting, but um, Bare metal, we don't have a lot of bare metal testing. We have a lot of people coming to us with bare metal issues when they're trying to actually use OKD out in the world. We don't have bare metal testing. And that's always hard because obviously there's 20 million configurations. Um, but it might be worth us to look at rounding up some folks willing to do bare metal testing. Just get the community to help us uh, so that we have some something that we can see what's going on um, and not just sort of be reactive, but be um, proactive in terms of bare metal stuff. Yeah, that oh yeah, go area. ahead, Christian. So yeah, I've actually been working with the bare metal team internally to get uh, support for bare metal IPI installer uh, provision infrastructure. So far we've only had support for a user provision infrastructure, UPI, 
but yeah, um, the all the pieces are now in place. All the code should now be there for um, yeah, essentially the the ironic parts uh, that I use to automate this um, installation for um, for bare metal installs. Um, and what's still missing is actually uh, building those images in CI and uh, putting them into the OKD uh, release payload. Uh, I have a card for that um, to work on, on it this sprint. So uh, this should also be happening very soon. Once, once those images are built, um, support should kind of just arrive with the next nightly build then. Um, this is, for now, this is uh, master. So this will probably, uh, only land in 4.10. Uh, I don't see a good chance for us to backport um, that to uh, 4.9. Uh, but yeah, just as a heads up, um, it, we should soon have uh, only 4.10 builds. Uh, yeah, uh, bare metal IPI support. Um, and you can check out the code and in the ironic image um, repository. There's also the ironic IPA downloader repository. Most of that is in, in the ironic image repository, though. Uh, there's a specific, an OKD specific Docker file now. And yeah, once that is hooked up into CI and uh, automatically built, um, we'll add it to the to the new OKD release payload. Excellent. So uh, do, we, do they do they need that to do to start testing bare metal though? We could test bare metal. Oh no, now. this is. This is uh, completely separate to the uh, UPI bare metal um, that we that we're already that we already have. Obviously, yeah. uh, more testing on that is always. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be worth it for us to get uh, a communication out to the community saying, "Hey, if there's some folks who can test bare metal UPI for us, um, it would really help the the um, OKD project and you know something like that." So communications can and uh, documentation can take that up. Uh, anything else from, from VIRTIG, issues? You will, yeah, from the oh. VIRTIG, you will get bare metal testing because it's basically the, the expected place to run OKD for running virtualization on top. So you will get a bit of bare metal testing from the SIG. Okay, excellent. Uh, once, there are, once there are OKD VIRTSIG people to do stuff with it, I don't, uh, it, it's fairly new and I don't think we've even done anything yet to, 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 tell people that the SIG exists because I think we just created it last week. Um, yeah. So oh, it has already 50 followers on Twitter. So it's crazy. It's getting... <laughs> I, that was purely, that's, that's purely good luck. <laughs> ah. All right. So we, for folks that don't know, there was a conversation between myself and Sandro and a few other folks about trying to make sure that, um, we have a joined effort in this and stuff like that. So expect in the next couple of weeks, more info on on how that we're all going to be united and and that's going to be a subgroup basically of the OKD working group so that we can share resources and and whatnot um, and some of these website changes and possibly new repo and stuff like that are all going to help this I think um, any other issues oh there's one that I'll address actually we have a handful of um, uh, AWS IPI single node uh issues get submitted i'm actually setting up a aws ipi um ci to test this regularly for 47 and 48 just because we had there was some mix-ups and it was supposed to work wasn't work uh, etc so if anyone can do other providers uh if you can offer up some resources to try other providers to do quick builds of um of a single node that would be awesome so just reach out to the group if you're interested Anything else for issues? All right, uh, moving now over to discussions. There was one discussion item. I'll have to put the link in the meeting notes, but uh, 896 is a NVIDIA GPU question on OKD. This is like our third question in that regard. Um, uh, and in particular about the operator that's available. Has anyone had a chance to use the operator? Um, the NVIDIA uh, operator to do the NVIDIA GPU stuff with OKD? We, here? We, not on this call, anyone I, mm -hmm. I would doubt. There is a, another Diane, Diane Fedema, who's a Red Hatter who has tested it extensively. Um, it is now being maintained by NVIDIA. Um, 
as opposed to something that's created out of Red Hat. Um, so there are contact people there. So um, we could hook, um, I could ask Diane Fetima to weigh in on the, um, go ahead, um, Michael. Oh, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt you. I just I've used it a ton on OCP as well. I've done a lot of testing around it. Um, so like I don't have the same. Like Diane's using it a lot for like workloads and whatnot. I've done a lot of work with it in terms of like uh, auto scaler and like cloud infrastructure stuff. So, but I haven't tested it on OKD yet. Um, I would imagine it works. The only, the only, the only difficult part is it needs like. On a full OCP cluster, it needs build entitlements to do like a build in there. I don't think there's an equivalent on OKD, so I'm not sure if it will pull the proper packages to do the building that it needs to do. Because right now that operator looks to pull a couple specific uh, like kernel header packages that are specific to the rel installation, you know, the core OS installation it's on. So like I don't know what it would do on an OKD cluster. It would probably try to pull a package that that doesn't exist or something. So you might get, you might be able to get up to the point where it's trying to build the driver and then the driver might fail there. That would be, that would be my suspicion, but let's, I, I haven't tested on OKD yet. Can you, uh, um, I, can I ask you to, to respond to the, the folks that posted the issues and, and just. Yeah, sure. I can, I, I can share what I know. Um, where do, is there a link in the notes to that? Sorry. I yeah, there's a lot. Just put it in the notes. Yep. So it's under the discussion section, uh, discussions, and I put a link. It's uh, discussion item 896. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll have to search for the other one. If, yeah. if I recall, there have been a couple of um, OpenShift Commons briefings on it um, with people from NVIDIA, and there was a Red Hatter who was key to creating it. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but yeah, I, it would be lovely to get it, get it working. But I think it's pretty finicky, if I recall. Um, it is so. so, so, so finicky that it is not even funny. Um, supposedly, though, NVIDIA is going to be making this better in the future. Like right now, the way that they're compiling this driver is that it must have the kernel headers for the exact kernel version that is running on the node that it's compiling to. Supposedly, in the future, NVIDIA is going to be getting better about creating dynamic kernel modules. So it will be able to install into a range of kernels is what I understand, but they that work is still that ongoing. That, they've already done it. The, they've, okay. got KMod, they've got KMod tracking, tracking packages. However, um, the Red Hat team that created the operator didn't incorporate any of the work that NVIDIA already did to use KAPI tracking KMods. So the NVIDIA team doesn't know how to do this, and so they're stuck. So okay, that's somebody, what that's what the speed bump is. Yeah, so somebody between Red Hat and NVIDIA needs to work together to get them to start using the stuff that NVIDIA already created for regular RHEL to do this stuff for um for this RHEL Corio's OpenShift uh stuff. It however will not work on OKD. And so for OKD, we're gonna need uh to be able to um detect and do the right thing and right. stuff like that. Well, that sounds like, like a great thing to should be smarter. Well, I think then what we can do is find out what those things are specifically and push up some changes uh, or submit some issues to get us there, right? Um, all right, so let's, uh, Mike, respond, and then I'll put this on the agenda for the next meeting as well, and we'll see where we are with that. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, uh, Sandra, go ahead and take it away. The virtualization sig. Oh, almost covered the, the the whole section in the previous discussion, so not much left. Uh, just raising the awareness on the existence of a kind of a prototype of the sig website that should be included in the upcoming uh, OKD new website. Uh, when we have a place to to squeeze it in. And uh, the Twitter and Reddit handle, uh, so if you want to discuss stuff related to virtualization on top of OKD, uh, you have a place where to discuss them. Uh, last one, push it up kind of a big PR uh, to the OpenShift docs for OKD, including all the parts related to virtualization. It's 
being reviewed right now by the OpenShift virtualization team. Uh, hopefully, it will get in soon. So that's it from the VC side. And maybe for folks that are going to be watching this video, can you give a quick elevator 30 second explanation of this change that's coming and why you're testing uh, in terms of virtualization changes and virtualization on uh, OpenShift and OKD? Therefore. Well, OpenShift virtualization has been around for a while and it's getting traction in different ways. Uh, the thing that we are seeing is that it is not getting that traction on the upstream community. We want to help the upstream community to start looking at it and enjoy it. Yeah. Like, so my thing about this when it comes to KubeVirt and to a lesser extent OpenShift virtualization is that to be blunt, it's terrible to use if you, if you want virtualization if you want to use virtualization, um, even in the OpenStack style way, um, the the Kubernetes API exposes too many details, and the UIs that are available for KubeVirt all are absolutely horrific, um, with the exception of Harvester, with from Rancher, which I think is somewhat promising. There doesn't seem to be anybody trying to make a KubeVirt front end that actually is appealing for people who need virtualization to be able to use and manage it. I, I mean, if I'm being somewhat, you know, optimistic, hopeful, dreaming or whatever, you know, I, I would love to see the over, overt UI, you know, pulled right out and layered on top yeah. of, of KubeVirt because well, the UX there is really, really nice, and it's a shame that it just is sitting there not being used. Yeah, just a quick tip about this. There is a KubeVirt provider that you can use for managing uh, the OKD virtualization uh, VMs from the OVIRT web UI. So it already exists, it's already there. So yeah, that's another good point. And yeah, th this kind of discussion about the user experience of the whole thing is one of the things that we like to see discussed in the weird thing. So you're, you're welcome to, to start the discussion there and we'll follow up. Excellent. All right, so we have eight minutes left. I wanna make sure we get everything in. Um, in terms of new business, I'm gonna, I struck out, crossed out, location of main repo, because we sort of touched on that, and it sounds like a discussion for um, maybe in a month once the website stuff has settled. Um, CRC subgroup. Uh, Neil, you had originally voiced interest in sort of leading the charge on some of that. We do need someone to, to really get the subgroup going, um, because it, uh, Charo is still sort of doing the builds, which means it's sort of at his whim and, and, and time availability. Are you, and um, uh, is it Dan uh, that yeah, was interested? Dan are you are you both still interested in leading the CRC subgroup? Yeah, uh, I think we are. It's, uh, it's um, we just haven't had any any time at the moment to, to start that, that work up, but we are, we've talked about it, about like what we, how we want to approach this this problem, it's just, uh, we probably need to sync up with Charo at some point and just like have a one-on-one um, -on -one conversation about it and then and then proceed from there. Because um, one of the goals, you know, Dan and I agree on is that we want to make, we don't want to make the automation for producing, we want to ultimately automate this. And so what we want to do is make sure that this can just be straight up run from within Fedora infrastructure on one of the CI CD platforms that exist within Fedora infrastructure and then be able to provide a way for people to easily take that automation and use it for their own internal deployments as well if they need to have customized deployments for their own use because like almost everything else around OpenShift nobody really understands how to assemble anything and I'd really like to not make that worse with with CRC um, and so, you know, demystifying just a little bit of it and making it approachable um, and also automated uh, means that we don't really have to worry so much about, you know, whether a person is doing it or not. 
So do you want help arranging a time to meet with um, Charo, or you want to just reach out to him via the Slack and, and try and find something that works for all of you? Do you want to make an official first meeting? Um, if you can help arrange that uh, that first meeting thing, that'd be, that'd be great, especially since I think Dan hasn't met uh, Charo at all. Um, and and so it'd be it'd probably just be good to get that initial introduction out of the way, and then we can we can take it from there. It's Dan Axelrod, correct? Yep. 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 And Diane, that. if you could CC me on that invite, I'd be yeah, interested no, in attending I, if I have the time. I'll do that. I'm going to try and set it up for next week, right after the docs meeting, if that works for people. Let me schedule. check real quick. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's we'll we'll do schedule stuff offline. We don't want to yeah get like just a uh, like because sure. Dan's on PTO right now, and I don't actually remember what day he comes back. I think it's I think it's either the end of this week or middle of next week. I don't know, but I'll I'll sync up with you afterwards and let you know. Yeah, I'll just create a little a little slack with the four of us in it or five of us now, um, and see if we can't come up with a time. And some other folks had voiced interest. I think Mike said he was interested in sort of following along with what's happening. And so um, let's, uh, yeah, and anyone else that's interested, um, uh, Driti, in fact, uh, also said uh, that she was interested. Uh, next up, I'm gonna strike out bare metal CI slash testing group because it sounds like we've got an interest in that and we can pull people together. Um, and so next up is the office hours, which is Wednesday the 13th at 5 p.m. Eastern uh, during uh, KubeCon. Mm -hmm. Diane, do you want to say anything about that? Um, so we are going to rinse and repeat our format that we used before. Um, and I think we have an hour um, is how long we've done it. it again, will be live streamed. Um, I, if there is someone, if, and I will send a note out to there, um, we have... We, I, I tapped a bunch of people already to come on to do that. Um, it would be great if we had a few more external people. Jamie's, I think, our one external person at the moment on it. Um, so if someone else wants to, and I was thinking of you, John Fortin, um, since you're giving the talk um, at there, and I'll send the, the time and that. But um, And if we can get Christian to do a little spiel on what's going on with ARM, that would be great. But um, we have a slide deck that we use that needs a slight bit of tweaking that I will tap Jamie to um, to do and to lead. And um, and I will try and keep my mouth shut as much as possible on it so that everybody else can shine. Um, but it's a it's a simple it's a great way to do outreach to the Kubernetes community. Um, and Timothy, thank you for agreeing to stay up late um, and do the answer Fedora core OS questions. But um, yeah. I don't think there's there is a limitation because it's being it's not the same um, as blue jeans you can't have as many people as you want we're using the CNCF's platform for it so you have to get uh, a, what's called a booth pass to KubeCon virtual and get in so it's a little bit more complicated than usual but um, if you are interested in sharing and being part of that I think we're limited to five people um, in in that window, so I'll, I'll have to count, but I think we might have might have hit that already. But I was hoping to get one more external person. So, well, let's see what we can do. So, if anyone's interested, uh, reach out to Diane um, or myself, and uh, we will see what we can do and how we can arrange it. Uh, in the last minute or so, I wanted to point out that I'm actually starting a task list and putting tasks that we have assigned to people. So it's gonna be at the end of the meeting notes and I'll fill it out after watching the recording and then I'll send an email out to the working group with the task list, like probably in the week between. So like next week, like Monday or Tuesday, you'll see an email with the task list sent out so that people are aware of their tasks and they can keep track of them and we can keep track of you keeping track of your tasks and make sure that stuff gets done and that it doesn't fall through the holes and stuff like that. So I think that's about it. Any last minute thoughts, needs, questions, comments, concerns? And as always, if anyone changes their mind and they're going to end up in person at KubeCon North America, let me know. Because El Mico. Yeah, El Mico.
Oh, yeah. I was just going to – Neil said something that kind of made me remember this. Um, and I'll just share a little bit of, like, uh, I guess, news from inside the hat or whatever this community might find interesting. We're working on a series of documentation right now that we're going to make as, like, a public Git repo um, and eventually be rendered to a site that's basically instructions for adding new infrastructure providers to the OpenShift platform. So, like, all the code changes that you'd need to make, all the different repositories that you'd need to touch, and how that integration process would happen. Um, you know, we had talked about doing this as, like, an OKD forward kind of thing, but we're focusing on OCP right now because we have providers who are interested in getting in. So this is hopefully when it'll be done in like, you know, maybe a couple months or something, it'll be a way to show off more of how the, you know, how the sauce is made or whatever for this community. Thank you. All right, we are at time, so let's call it here. Thanks everyone for your participation. Uh, look forward to the video and the meeting notes coming up in the task list and uh, talk to you all soon. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank